Yeah, right there. You're fine. Just spin that microphone around. Who? Uh, yeah, you're good there. Six back on the morning drive, News Talk 105.9 WVGA. Coming up later on, we'll have your community calendar and tell you about some things happening this weekend. And uh, one of those things we're going to tell you about right now, if you are an outdoor enthusiast or uh, if you uh, think, hey, Ben, the weather's uh, right, and it's time to get outdoors and enjoy some of the great uh, outings that we have in South Georgia, the uh, Walls Watershed Coalition is going to have a great one this weekend. John Quarterman is here this morning to tell us about it. John, good morning. How are you? Howdy, Chris. Good to see you. That's good to see somebody who's up earlier than me. <laughs> well, we did do that, but uh, you're going to be probably up earlier than most of us on Saturday morning, although I do think you're going to get a, uh, a great turnout for the Big Little River Paddle Race, the fourth annual. Tell folks a little bit about this. Oh, well, it's fun. You don't actually have to race. You can just paddle. It's about three miles, and depending on who you are, there's this fellow Dwight Griner, who's one of the first three years straight. He I, he does it about half an hour. I swear he goes now, comes back, goes again, <laughs> while other people are still getting there. <laughs> so you can be like Dwight. Who knows? You might meet Dwight this time, or you can leisurely paddle, or you can race in the middle. That's right. Registration. This is all going to be a read thing, by the way. Uh, is that correct? That's uh, right. Yeah. Reading them between Eight Al and Moultrie on the Little River. It's beautiful there. Registration from eight to nine a.m. Saturday, and then uh, everybody kind of heads out around nine thirty. Is that correct? That's right. And it's uh, thirty dollars per boat, and that's five dollar park entrance fee. However, you get a free lunch at the finish, and there's awards in all sorts of categories according to you know uh, single female kayak, dual kayak, so on and so forth. So you could win a prize. In fact, we even have a special extra prize, which was made by Phil Hubbard, who lives in Dallas County and works in Valdosta. It's the Outings Fuller Award for 2016 for those who fall into the water. <laughs> I love that. So even when you fail, you can win, I guess. That's right. Uh, and that's a beautiful little plaque, too. So uh, check that out. And again, we appreciate Phil, who's a friend of the show as well, for uh, putting that together. We remind folks, no motors allowed. This is a... Uh, Purely canoes and kayaks only. Do you usually get more of one than the other, or some of both? Um, that's actually more kayaks because you tend to have a lot more single kayaks, but there's plenty of canoes. And yes, uh, it's supposed to be canoes or kayaks because you know, you're supposed to be on your own power. A motor right. would be cheating. That's right. Uh, but do bring life jackets, they are required of everybody. And again, as you mentioned, uh, there are some people who are going to be going for awards, but there will be a lot of folks who will just want to enjoy a beautiful day on the river. So That's right. It's fun for the whole family. And, uh, speaking of Phil Hubbard, he has a special offer he just told me uh, yesterday, which is he will pay for two entrance fees for two boats. So if you want nice. to take him up on that, send mail to wallswatershed at gmail.com. That's W-W-A-L-S watershed, W-W-A-L-S-W. R-S-H-E-D at gmail.com say you want to take us up on the free offer of an entrance to the power race. First two to do that, fill the paper. Hey, thank you, Phil. That's very nice and generous. And if you want more information about it, 392-5513 or always you can go to anything that has to do with walls, www.als.net and uh, they'll find out more information there about the fourth annual Big Little River Paddle race coming up this weekend, and uh, all the proceeds uh, benefit the Fri Friends of Reed Bingham Park. Is that correct? Uh, Friends, of, Friends of Reed Bingham and Walls. It's split between the two of them. They're both nonprofits. So Walls is a 501c3. You can deduct this from your taxes. Oh, and that number you said, I got to mention Brett Wagonhorse of Tifton. This is his brainchild, and he's the chief organizer, and we sure do appreciate it. Brett's a great guy, Dr. Wagonhorse is, and so uh, come one, come all. Reed Bingham State Park right there. 
So that's not a big deal. It's all going to start at the Red Roberts Landing, and you can uh, find a lot of anything you want to know about it. Again, go to walls.net and you'll find out more about it. So that's one of the many outages. You, you've already had several uh, this spring already, right? Right. Just one more thing about the paddle race. You can bring your own boat or you can rent from right there and don't cut the alligator and I'll probably eat <laughs> Always live words. So. Right. So um, uh, we do uh, water trails. You may have heard of our life already the water trail, but there's a newish one we're doing. Um, I have here uh, that you can see on radio. Oh, wait. Well, Chris can yeah, see. that's right. Yeah. It's a little pamphlet for the Withcoochee and Little River Water Trail. We're going to do a fancy one like the Jalapama one soon. And thank you, Valdosta Lounge Tourism. They've already contributed $500 towards printing. Good. This, uh, there are 24 access points on the Little River and the Withcoochee River. Uh, so that's a lot of voting that you can do. One of our board members, Chris Miracle, did a week from just below Reed Bingham down to the Swanee recently. Hmm. And if you want to paddle with us on June 4th in Florida from Florida campsites to Swanee River State Park, Springs, Rapids, and we've got to see if that chair is still sitting on top of that old bridge, but it's very important. <laughs> so check that out uh, again the walls.net, but this is a really cool pamphlet. It does give you a lot of information about the trails that are in our area. Probably a lot more, John, than most people really know exists. Well, yeah, I didn't realize there were 24 access points yeah. so we're starting to compile these. This is every <coughs> access point from every uh, guidebook, except that that's the one that's missing that we'll add there, the one just below the dam, three big them. And uh, the distances are actually quite important. We had a workshop about this water trail at DSU uh, a couple months ago. We had a, a game warden come, Jim Pato, and um, he said that these distances were very important because on the lap I gets people that put in at US 82 and think they're going to paddle the state bill by the end of the day. He succeeded in doing that distance by using his fancy power boat full out. You're not going to do it for that. Ah, right. So, you know, it's good to look at the distances. There's also time estimates, so you can have some idea of uh, is this uh, morning outing? Is it all day or is it a week? And if it's a week, you don't want to be thinking just one day, you won't be prepared. Okay. It's supposed to be fun, not an ordeal. <laughs> That's right. So, again, good information to get from that uh, pamphlet. Uh, are those pamphlets available? Uh, um, sure, we got them set around everywhere, and they're also on the website. You can print the PDF yourself. Okay. And we will be printing a fancy brochure soon, which we will make sure that we show up at the Chamber of Commerce and you know, the, uh, you know, the Welcome Center on 75, up and down South here over opens again. Yes, yeah. places like that. Very good. Uh, again, John Corbin joining us from the uh, Walls Watershed Coalition. And uh, so, other events, I know we got this weekend with Federal. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other ones coming up that we need to kind of keep on our radar? Was well, I mentioned June 4th in Florida on the Withcoochee and on July 9th also on the Withcoochee River in South End of Browns County from Nankin Landing to Madison Highway. Uh, we did that one three years ago and it's going to be interesting to see what it's like this time. There are some shoals and rapids on there. They're quite fun. And this time we're looking for the apparently lost McIntyre Spring. Some of you may have heard of Blue Spring on the road to Quitman. Well, McIntyre Spring was reputed to be the only other big spring in Brooks County on the Withcoochee River, so we think we know where it is, we'll see if we can find it. Oh, so there you go, a little mystery to it. So. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like a lot of fun. Again, you keep up with everything they do at <coughs> excuse me, www.als.net. And uh, John, we always like to kind of get an update from you on the uh, Signal Trail Transmission Pipeline. That is the story. A lot of folks, what I, what I feel like, a lot of folks think it's a a done deal, it is not. Right. Well, there's two reasons people think that. One is that's what Safe Trail always wanted you to think. They, they just don't tell you the whole story. And the other is because of an actual great victory, something that even we who organized, and I'm proud to say Walls helped with this, uh, in the Georgia House of Representatives on March 22nd, and yes, I've memorized this, by a vote of 128 against to only 34 for, the Georgia House denied easements to drill under Georgia rivers. And then that bill passed without those easements, so there's nothing in it for the governor to sign or veto. There are no easements. The legislature doesn't meet again until January. So, but 
people assume that Sable Trail is going to sue and try to get that overturned in court. So, unfortunately, while we wish that that was enough to stop it, it may not be. Okay. We, are, we by we I mean Walls is one of them, but the entire Georgia Water Coalition, which is 200 plus groups throughout the state of Georgia, are now asking our state reps and you, the listeners and the people of Georgia, to ask Governor Deal to get the Georgia Environmental Protection Department to deny the Clean Water Act Section 401 permits for Sable Trail. That's a mouthful, Clean Water Act Section 401, which is say, deny the water permits. Okay, so, and, and is he planning on making a decision on that sometime soon? Or do we know? Well, the EPD could make a decision any day now, and it's kind of a catch here that Governor Deal really wanted those easements in that bill. So we need a lot of help convincing him not to do that. And if, he, and if EPD actually denies these water permits, that's what the state of New York did that appears to have pretty near stopped a different pipeline up there, the so-called Constitution Pipeline. I love these names. They pick these things. <laughs> Very patriotic. The, uh, the one pipeline that was over in uh, East Georgia, and which is different than the pipeline we have here, or that's been proposed, come through here, and I, and I think sometimes people, again, just don't know enough of the details. When they hear about one, they think it's the same kind of thing that's not. Th that's another reason, is on that same day, March 22nd, earlier that same day, the Georgia House decided to pass, and, and the whole legislature later passed, a moratorium for 18 months on petroleum products pipelines. And the next week, Kendra Morgan suspended its Palmetto Pipeline, which would have gone across the entire coast of Georgia to Jacksonville, which is another big win, because that thing is probably dead. But unfortunately, for historical reasons, the law, both federal and state, makes a big distinction between petroleum products pipeline, which is what that one was, and natural gas pipelines, which is what Sable Trail is. It's a completely different legal process. So while it's great that other pipeline appears to be dead, it does have it has no direct effect on safety trip. So do you feel um, reinvigorated or, or more hopeful for those who are against this pipeline than you were say six months ago? Uh, yeah, I mean that was a great victory, 128 yeah. 34. I just like saying that. <laughs> uh, this fellow uh, Neil Herring, who's been lobbying the legislature on behalf of Sierra Club for decades, he has never seen a victory that big. Oh, wow. Well, that, I guess, would be encouraging. And we're not stopping there. Just yesterday in Florida at Smiley River State Park, uh, Walls and half a dozen other groups, you know, it's, once again, definitely not just us. I would name them all, but it would take the whole time. We held a, a little outing for Ted Yoho, who is a member of Congress from Florida's District 3, which is basically all of the Smiley River Basin in Florida right across the state line from this area. So you could see for himself some sinkholes right near the pipeline that Sable Trail didn't bother to tell him about. And you got two geological reports by a practicing geologist telling him about even more stuff. And he got a 28-page letter which Walls had previously sent to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers detailing all sorts of other things that Sable Trail didn't tell him. And the purpose of this is to get Representative Yoho to ask the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, here's a bit of jargon for you, to open a supplementary environmental impact statement. Supplementary environmental impact statement. This is important because the Corps doesn't really do an independent study of its own, but they can open that process and then those of us who found all these discrepancies can send them in and the Corps has to take them into consideration. We've also been talking to Austin Scott, who, as you, I assume you all know, is our representative in Georgia's District 8. We had a nice meeting with him in Tifton. And practically the first words out of his mouth were, water is very important. And we're also talking to Sanford Bishop, Georgia's District 2, which is the southwest part of the state. Scott and Bishop, between them, have the entire path of pipeline in Georgia. And we're talking to a bunch of other representatives and Senators. So the idea is if we have elected members of Congress asking the board to do this, they may actually do it. We know they can. They did it for Keystone XL, they did it for several different natural gas pipelines, and what we're asking is for them to open a supplementary environmental impact statement. You can ask them too. 
just click on walls.net and you'll find the addresses. I'll make sure it's at the top and after the pathways. And also, the uh, any kind of time frame on that as far as uh, what is expected uh, that they might be approached? Well, the sooner the better. Uh, we have drafted a letter for the various congressmen to send. They may send that, they may send something else. You know, they write their own letters. Right. And um, we know that the Corps already has thousands of comments. And uh, they have been asked by three county commissions in Florida already, Hamilton, Swanee, and Marion counties, to do this. And, uh, oh, the last county commission could do this because while you may recall in the previous episode, the Miles County Commission decided to accept money for an easement from Sable Trail. Nonetheless, Chairman Bill Slaughter said in the BBT that does not mean it's an endorsement of the pipeline. So the Miles County Commission could also ask the Corps to do this. Valdosta City Council could ask the Corps to do this. The Miles County School Board could ask the Corps to do this because this thing would go within barely a mile from Quietville Elementary. And if you've been following the news, like that explosion by the same company, Spectrum Energy in Pennsylvania, that thing melted siding off of houses half a mile away and put up a 40 mile long plume of smoke that was visible on the weather radar. Yeah. Not good news. Well, we'll see where all that uh, goes. And of course, you can keep up with that, I'm sure, at the walls.net, www.als.net for uh, the latest. And I'll keep you up to date there. Uh, again, the big Little River Paddle Race mm -hmm. coming up this Saturday. Again, you can uh, register uh, in several different ways. Of course, you can just call. You can show up. Again, registration will start at 8 o'clock. The uh, race, quote unquote, you don't have to race it. The uh, event, uh, let's say that, will begin at 9.30 right there at Red Bingham State Park. And uh, all are welcome. So. And if you want to take advantage of Phil Hubbard's generous offer, uh, just send an email to wallswatershed at gmail.com saying, I'd like to get one of those two free registrations. First two to do that, we'll get them. There you go. John, good to see you as always. Thanks for the information. All righty. Thanks again, Chris. We'll take a break and come right back for your weather for today and the rest of this week. Right after this, Jessica Catlin will be along with us soon to the Parks and Recreation Authority to tell us about some things they got coming up. Summertime for kids is right around the corner. they got plenty of programs. And she'll tell you more about that. Lots more on this Monday morning edition of the Morning Drive on News Talk 103.7.